All right, so hi everybody. Um, my name is Stephanie Vero Fields. I am an education researcher at the Space Science Institute or Education Associate. Um, I am based now in Boulder, Colorado. That is where the headquarters for SSI is at. Uh, but as I just said, I am from New England. So this makes me really, really happy to chat with all of you. Um, so I am part of the CERNET crew, which I'll talk a little bit about if you've never heard of us before. Um, and yeah, this presentation is just going to be about um, Eclipse resources specifically for you. We have multiple grants through both the federal government and foundations uh, to bring STEM learning to public libraries. So you may have heard of StarNet in general, the NASA at My Library project, STEAM equity, um, any types of things like that are all part of us here at the Space Science Institute. And uh, we just, we love public libraries and work with you guys and bring STEM and all of that. And this presentation is going to be very interactive. So please, at any time, feel free to ask questions in the chat, unmute and ask a question. Um, I love discussions and things like, I'm giving you guys a bunch of information, but I want to hear about what you're doing. I want to hear about um, challenges you may have and how we can better support you, because that is my role. So kind of to get us going because I know you guys are all coming back from lunch is either unmute and tell me or drop it in the chat what is something you enjoy about doing STEM programming in your library less directions and more fun there's challenges interactive activity, learning along with the kids. Yes, that is huge. Loving that the kids have fun with their learning, hands-on learning. I love hearing all of that. Yes, absolutely. We're huge about hands-on learning. Bringing new experiences to participants, watching kids struggle but work it through. Yes, everybody learns something. It is intergenerational. Ooh. Um, I like when kids started on a STEM station, I don't have time to explain the directions before they're already zooming along. So they kind of inherently know this. Impressed by the kids and you yourself learning a lot. Uh, concept that some may feel are hard to understand and digestible. Or, or sorry, I love making concepts that are some may feel are hard, easy and to understand and digestible. Learning and exposure to other areas. Yes, all of this is about STEM. Um, out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. So like one of the big things we talk about with STEM and libraries is it's not so much about getting the right answers that, oh, it's data driven and it's yes and no, and this is correct, but more it's about the learning process itself and learning about STEM and all, all of that, and that open-ended or ambiguous outcomes and that it's fun and that you have to do all these really, you know, special things. So Thank you. That was all really, really good ideas that I'm hearing. So yeah, so for those of you who have never heard of us, uh, the Space Science Institute is a nonprofit, um, like I said, based in Colorado. And we are federally funded through NASA and NSF. We also get uh, foundational grants, which is how I'm talking to you guys today, is through the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, who is supporting our SEAL initiative. But the goal of SSI is to discover, educate, and inspire. So we do have researchers who are on NASA missions, who are heliophysicists and chemistry and planetary geologists and all these really fun, complicated names. So we do have researchers, and we want to enable our scientists to advance our understanding of the Earth and the universe. But on the education side, we also want to make sure we increase science and tech literacy for everybody, whether they're a scientist or not. And we really want to help youth be inspired to do STEM education, STEM careers, or just have a lifelong love of STEM that they don't necessarily need to make a career out of, but just that they enjoy. And so raise of hands, how many people here have heard of StarNet before I gave this presentation today? Well, I'm seeing a couple hands. But a lot of you guys haven't. Oh, good. I like making new friends. So this makes me really happy. So welcome. Hi, if you've never heard of us before. So under the uh, education department, we have kind of this umbrella group called the Star Library Network. 
Um, STAR stands for Science and Technology Activities and Resources for Libraries, which is a very, very, very long word. So we just call ourselves StarNet. Um, and our goal 100% is to support public libraries in doing STEM education for their patrons, young and old, um, underserved, uh, underrepresented, and everybody else in your community. So if you haven't heard about us before, this is kind of everything we do, which is a good amount. We do um, exhibits. So we currently have two exhibit, no, three exhibits that are currently touring with another one that's going to be coming out. In fact, Newtown, Connecticut is set to receive our Discover Exoplanets exhibit. Um, we just had our Moon, Mars, and Beyond exhibit move from Keene, New Hampshire down to uh, Long Island, and then it will be in Hartford uh, this summer. So if anybody wants to go check it out, it will be at the Hartford Public Library through a bunch of their branches. Um, so we do science exhibits. Um, we try to make them as museum quality as possible, but then put them into a library setting and make them really fun and interactive. We also create kits um, for public libraries, both state and the public, which I will talk a little bit more about. Um, things like I'm doing right now, professional development. We help to train library staff in STEM. We try to help them feel a little more comfortable in maybe not having the subject matter expert knowledge, but feeling more comfortable facilitating STEM activities and understanding that you don't have to have the answers. You can learn right around, along with your patrons, which a lot of you said in that icebreaker. So that makes me really happy. Um, we focus on something called community dialogues, which is a way to help you build partnerships. Um, so also partnership guidance. We understand you guys are always asked to do a lot and uh, with little and it seems funding is getting less, but we're asking you to do more. So we really want to help you guys establish partnerships and work with your community so you can still do the amazing stuff you're doing, but you get a little help with it too. Um, SME matchmaking, um, which is subject matter experts. So I'm so happy to see a solar system ambassador on. That's part of the network that we like to help uh, libraries reach out to, you know, let them bring that content knowledge to your library so then you're not having to worry about it. You can just do the really fun hand on stuff. Uh, we do special events such as the uh, eclipses. Um, we have a clearinghouse of interactive activities, which I will talk about. We talk about how to facilitate, so kind of a guide on the side approach. If you don't have to have the answers, you learn right along with your patrons, which again, a lot of you said, and that makes me happy. We have tons of resources from NASA and NSF that we like to distribute to you guys. And then like today, Eclipse Glasses and Training. So we, we have quite a plethora of things that we like to help support um, public libraries on. So... We're going to kind of take it back a bit. Who was a library staff member during 2017 and the eclipse then? Anybody have any memories that they want to share? Good or bad. I know it was a it was an interesting experience in 2017. Yeah, go ahead, Kathleen. So um, I would say the excitement leading up to the event. I mean, people were really excited and they were coming in to get the glasses and it was just a, a general good feeling throughout our community. Yeah. Do you feel like you brought a little extra science to your community that was unexpected? Yes, I do. And, you know, we worked, we did, you know, we did a couple of little things around it. You know, we bought telescopes and, um, you know, the people could borrow. So it, as I just remember a general good feeling and excitement about the whole thing. Yep, I agree. Yeah, Anna put in a great thing in the chat. Patron inquiry, can we offer this at a better time? I, I, I heard from quite a few library staff across the country how many people said, can we move the time of the eclipse? This doesn't work for me. I, I wish I had the godlike power to move the moon when I wanted to, but nope, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it, it's really tough to reschedule the sun, 100%. Um, but yeah, so I, I thank you, Kathleen, for sharing that. Absolutely. It was a chance to bring some science, bring excitement about um, some solar activity that's happening that affected everybody across the United States. Anybody else have any fun memories they want to share from 2017? Did 
Diane said, I started in August and it had just ended. It was all I heard about for months. So you just missed it. Agreed. I wasn't working at SSI at the time. I was uh, working down in Florida. And I remember being so upset that I didn't have eclipse glasses because I thought I had to work that day. And then like ran home, had to Google, how can I look at the sun without staring at it directly? Don't do that. That's that's not something we want you to do without protection. So yeah, so back in 2017, on August 21st, we had a solar eclipse that was visible across the entire continental US for the first time since 1918. Um, we actually received funding at that time to provide professional development to library staff across the country, and we also distributed eclipse glasses. So at the time, we got told, oh, nobody's going to care unless they're in totality. Well, this is the map of all the libraries that worked with us in 2017 around the eclipse, which proves that just because you're not in totality doesn't mean that your patrons aren't going to be excited and wanting to learn about eclipses. Um, we had libraries in every single state um, participate, including Alaska and Hawaii. We worked... Um, to make sure everybody had safe viewing opportunities. And in 2017, at least 65, or each state had at least 65% of the sun covered by the moon. And it was, and luckily, and lucky people on a narrow path from Oregon to South Carolina were in totality. So through our project alone, we allowed 6 million people to observe the event safely. Um, we had participating libraries conduct an estimated 35,000 science programs before and after the eclipse. And based off of that, we reached about 1.7 million people. Um, so I, what it, I remember the newspaper in our area published that you could pick up glasses at the library before we had received our glasses. So that was fun. Yeah, uh, CNN interviewed our then director at the time. and. I, I, it's not our fault. They took the piece where he was like, yeah, we're working with public libraries to help support. And they just took go to their public library to get glasses. So we were being a lot better this time. So yeah, by the numbers, uh, we actually at the time distributed 2.1 million eclipse glasses. And we worked with about 7,000 individual library locations, which included library public library branches, bookmobiles, tribal libraries, library consortias, state libraries. Um, and it was just a really fantastic program. And, you know, I love, you know, quotes about us, but it was just a great opportunity for libraries to reach audiences they weren't able to reach before, work with new groups. Um, so, you know, here's what one library said that they were just one of the biggest events that they ever had. And um, a lot of libraries have said that since they haven't had as big an activity, that 2017 seemed to be like culmination of huge events for them. And I love this quote. So this is actually from Fort Fairfield in Maine. Um, our Eclipse programming connected us with community collaborators for our future programming and created excitement from our patrons about future STEM programming. So this is kind of why I'm specifically talking about the eclipse, but you can use the eclipse as a jump off point to either grow the STEM programming you're doing in your library, maybe start STEM programming if you haven't done it before, uh, build some partnerships in your community that maybe you haven't been able to establish. Um, so this is why I love talking about this is, you know, yes, this is one specific event, but you can use this event to continue on once the eclipse comes and goes. So what is coming next? So two more eclipses are coming to the United States. Um, you and your pets, that's Curtis, that's Brooks, who works here at SSI. His dog was very safe looking at the uh, eclipse. You have two more opportunities to view the sun in a really spectacular event. So in October of this year, so in a few months, we are going to have what's called an annular solar eclipse. So this is slightly different from a total where the moon is slightly further away from Earth in its orbit. So it's an ecliptical orbit. It's kind of egg-shaped. Um, it'll be a little further away, so it's not going to cover the sun completely. There's going to be a nice little ring around it. Um, unfortunately, none of you in New England are in totality, but you will still get a partial eclipse. And then on Monday, April 8th in 2024, a total eclipse will be visible in the U.S. So totality will be visible first in Mexico, coming to Texas just after noon local time. 
The eclipse then heads northeast through Oklahoma, Missouri, Ohio, New York, and Maine, to name just a few of the states, and then into Canada. In the northeast specifically, totality will be around 3 to 3.30 p.m. So in most of the U.S., students may be in school for the eclipse, so I encourage you to work with your schools. Uh, one of the biggest things that kind of was disappointing to us in 2017 is how many school classrooms didn't let the kids go out and experience totality or experience the eclipse because of a lot of misinformation about how dangerous it was. So this is why we're also working with you guys is so that way you can build a partnership with your school system to encourage classes to go out and to show you different ways that you can view the sun in a safe way so that kids can experience this. Um, what's amazing about this eclipse too is that in, New Mex in Mexico, South Texas, the total eclipse is going to last over four minutes, which is pretty decently long for an eclipse. Um, average time is usually about two and a half minutes. In 2017, I think it was about two and a half minutes. Um, so four minutes, four and a half minutes, depending on the area, is actually a really long time, and we're excited for that. Um, if you are just off you know, totality, you're going to experience a partial eclipse, which is going to be amazing. Um, so the path of totality where the sun is completely blocked out by the moon will be over 100 miles wide and pass over more cities than it did in 2017. Um, so we're estimating about 32 million people live along the path of totality and many millions will be will be meeting there on April 7th and 8th. So especially you New England states, uh, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, be prepared. You're going to have a lot of people coming to you guys to come view totality. So we want to make sure that you feel prepared. And even if your library is not in the path of annularity or totality, you may have patrons who are going to plan to travel to those locations. So you can still provide resources, programming, and safety, safety information heading up to that eclipse. And by the way, the next total eclipse to cross the continental U.S. will not be until August of 2045. So don't miss this one because the uh, next one is 21 years away. So what are we doing this time? We're distributing 5 million eclipse glasses. We got funding from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation specifically for this. So in 2017, we did 2.1. So we're doubling, actually we're doing more than double of what we did before. So we are distributing 5 million eclipse glasses. And I did see a couple questions in there about where do we get them? I have a slide at the end that uh, to help you sign up if you haven't already. Uh, we're doing workshops and trainings in all 50 states. I will actually be in Massachusetts um, April 12th. Well, the, I think our workshop's on the 13th. Um, so I will be in Massachusetts doing a workshop. I know that we have Rhode Island signed up, Connecticut. Um, so we are coming out to you guys to do in-person workshops around this. So contact your state library about that if you haven't heard about it already. Um, so we're doing workshops, we are doing, um, and we got to the territories. So this picture, um, the two pictures you see, we went to Guam and the Northern Marianas Islands back in December, because they actually are getting their own total eclipse on April 20th. So in little less than a month, they are getting their own total solar eclipse. So we are trying to support the territories as well with work that we're doing. Um, so we're trying to in addition to delivering the glasses, we're developing education materials, such as a booklet with solar eclipse information. So when you um, ask for glasses, you will get a booklet as well. Uh, we are also trying to provide online training. So if you keep an eye out, we do have some virtual training similar to what I'm doing right now around eclipses. And we are circulating solar science kits, which you can check out from your state library. Um, we've also put together an online community that you can be a part of to get more information on eclipses, connect with other libraries to share ideas, and connect with subject matter experts to help uh, facilitate your programs, So, such as folks from the Solar System Ambassadors and the Night Sky Network. So what do these kits look like? Um, again, each, li each state library is doing it slightly differently. Some state libraries are just providing them to larger library branches and letting a regional circulation happen. Some state libraries are managing it themselves. Um, but we are providing two of each kit to the state libraries. Um, so this is the what we call our younger audience kit. Both kits are multi-generational, but this one has a lean a little bit more towards um, 
younger audiences. So we provide the tub, a sun spotter, which is an indirect solar viewing um, piece. Then we're giving trainings on how to use these um, items. Luckily on Sunspotters, the directions are completely on the back, so they're pretty easy to follow. We're also providing um, the Moon Bear Shadow Book and an activity that goes along with it, since an eclipse is a the moon shadow casted onto the surface of the Earth. So we like to talk about shadows and all of that, and so we provide activity and materials for that. We also providing two small sonoculars. So these are binoculars, but they've got solar filters inside of them, so you can safely view the sun. And then we also have uh, what we call our sorting game, and we have the printed files in that kit. So each state library is getting two of these. And then we are also providing this other kit um, called the multi-generational kit. Again, both are, but this one is geared a little more older. So we are providing a Coronado solar telescope. This is a telescope specifically designed to look at the sun. And all it can do is look at the sun. You cannot view stars with it. If you have a standard telescope, you can get a solar filter that you can put over the telescope to view the sun. But this is only sun, um, along with the tripod and a case to protect it. We also have When the Sun Goes Dark book. This book is not a story time book, but it's more of a great informational book. You can copy and distribute uh, different pages from that book um, in order to educate your patrons on what's coming with the eclipse. We're also providing two large sonoculars. So these actually have more of that binoc um, binocular capability. They, they have magnification and some other stuff. And then um, an activity called Big Sun, Little Moon, we're providing the handout. The materials are really easy to come by, so we didn't want to supply those at the um, at this time. Pretty easy to find in your library. And then finally, something I want to let you guys know about is this is coming. So the Globe Observer, which is a citizen science group funded by NASA, is actually has an opportunity specifically for public libraries. So up to a hundred U.S. public libraries are going to receive a kit around the eclipse and um, ongoing support. So I kind of showed you here a little bit about what they will provide. So they will have an observer card, a digital thermometer in order to gauge temperature before, after, um, before the eclipse, after the eclipse, and then during the eclipse um, in both English and Spanish, some globe books, all of that. And I do, I have provided these slides. So if you can't write everything down quickly. I do have them provided so you are able to get the URLs with this. Um, so what is it? Volunteers will take temperature, cloud, and land cover observations using simple tools. Smartphone, you can download the Globe Observer app to your phone um, and get started there. And then Globe Observer team will work with you um, about this. And they are seeking you at um, public libraries right now. So if you can, print screen, take a picture. Again, I have provided these slides so you guys are aware. Um, there will be on May 4th, a webinar on Globe Observer Eclipse kits. So what's gonna be in there? Uh, applications will be open. You guys are more than welcome to apply for this. Everything is free and provided to you uh, because this is federally funded. Um, in mid June and July, once they have selected the 100 libraries, kits will be shipped to you. And then we'll have some more details about that. But you guys all are available to sign up for this opportunity to work with uh, the Globe Observer, which again is one of probably the best citizen science programs out there. Um, they are fantastic. We've worked with them at StarNet on multiple things and they, they are by far amazing. Ooh, okay, so that was a lot of information and a lot of things I threw at you. So I'm kind of gonna throw this at back at all of y'all. Have you thought about planning for Eclipse programs this summer to prepare for the two coming? If so, what are some ideas that you have? If you haven't, what are some ideas that you're hoping to get? Stephanie, and again, you are, yeah. Could I just share a couple of things that we're doing here in New Hampshire? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I think one of the biggest ones, um, Andrew Fracknoy and Dennis Schatz, who used to run National Science Teachers Association, they've compiled a list of non-science eclipse material for the humanities. 
So things like for adults, Stephen King's book, Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne that prominently feature a solar eclipse. And it's a way to reach readers that might not wanna read like me about 5,000 years of solar eclipses, but to get uh, other patrons that might want to read it. So that list is, do you have that list available? Are you familiar with it? Uh, yeah, actually, Andy and Dennis are both um, co-eyes on this project. So I have a meeting with them every other week. Great, so that list is available. I know we're making it available to New Hampshire. We're also doing in conjunction with a planetarium, a solar eclipse time capsule. So it'll go into the ground just after this eclipse and it comes out of the ground with the next total solar eclipse comes through your area in New Hampshire, that's gonna be 55 years later. So we're doing it with the planetarium, but libraries would certainly be a great place to, to do that. And in Vermont, we're doing with Sheldon and Richford, uh, paint or designate the center line. Sheldon Elementary has a center line go right through their building, as does the town of Richford. So if there's anyone who has contacts with those librarians who might want to reach out to me or to local people in that area. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for just about everybody. And the final thing I'll just say, I have an Eclipse mobile. I'm going to change my background to show it. Uh, can you see it? Yep. So that's the Eclipse mobile. That's what I'm using here in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine. Uh, to promote the eclipse. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all that. Um, I'm going to answer a couple of the questions too while other people um, share their other ideas or if somebody else wants to unmute, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if you have, there was a great question. If you have already received glasses from us, um, you cannot reorder more. So my recommendation is um, either divide them in half and save some for 2024 and save some for this year. Um, but, and when you get a little closer, you're welcome to reach out to us in case we haven't hit that 5 million mark, but we wanna make sure every library gets an opportunity to get some glasses to start. Um, but I recommend if you haven't distributed them yet, make sure you keep them boxed up. Um, they'll, they're more protected if they stay in the boxes. Um, but yeah, you can't order right now if you've already ordered them, but check with us a little bit later to see what happens. Um, we don't actually work with the library telescope program, I don't think. Um, we're just providing these to the state libraries. And oh my gosh, I love that. We're going planning to do hikes, outdoor activities, including watching the eclipse in October. I know October in New England is beautiful, and as long as it doesn't rain, it's usually really nice. Um, so you can definitely plan some outdoor activities. However, it also likes to rain in New England in the fall. Um, so if you happen to get rained out, um, there are some really great ideas. The Moon Bear Shadow activity, which we do have in our clearinghouse, I will talk about that in a minute. Um, that is a great activity you can do inside. Um, we have some other activities such as Eclipse Chalk Art that you can do. We do have a whole list of stuff that you can do inside if it happens to rain or if it's cloudy and you're not going to be able to see the eclipse, um, we do have some really great ideas that you can do. You can still also, um, I believe NASA will do a live stream of the eclipse. So you can also be able to link into that if for some reason it is cloudy or rainy. Um, who's available for presenting in New Hampshire about the eclipse? Uh, yes, me, Rick can. Rick can do it, definitely. <laughs> Ooh, Every Soul a Star by Wendy Mass is a fantastic eclipse-centered children's chapter book. So that is a great option to provide. Um, yeah, sound temperature watch the eclipse on the big screen. Again, if it rains, which is common, um, there are multiple ways that you can at least um, link in via YouTube or, or NASA TV in order to watch it. New Hampshire also have some great astronomy groups that will visit and do talks. Yes, that is something I would recommend. So one of the, and I do have this on a slide, is Solar System Ambassadors and the Night Sky Network are both great groups that you can partner with. Solar System Ambassadors are typically individuals who are retired researchers or scientists, people who have a 
um, interest in it that have gotten extensive training in this. So they're kind of the subject matter experts that can help you with this. Um, Night Sky Network tends to be uh, amateur astronomy groups that have been certified by NASA um, that they are good. They have their information. They have their own telescopes that they will bring to you. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, can we recommend the community to save the glasses for 2024? Yes, I recommend you do save them. Um, I think you should, so say you've got a thousand from us, maybe distribute 200 for the annular eclipse. You may have some people travel, may want to see it. Um, but indirect viewing would be a great option for that. And then save the majority for 2024. Since a lot of you guys are either in or close to totality, you are gonna have a lot more interest for that. The other um, idea that I we've been telling libraries is don't just have them at your, your reference desk or your circulating desk and just handing them out to people who ask for them. Only distribute during a program. Um, one, you're going to make sure that the members of your community are getting the eclipse glasses and not people who are just coming in for the eclipse. Um, but also you could provide some safety information about the eclipse glasses, like making sure that one, you wear them the entire time unless you are in totality itself. And then you can take them off if you're in annular totality, you can't take them off at all. Um, but it's also just making sure that your community gets them um, and then you're able to distribute them easier than just having them and just handing them out willy nilly. How would participants store their glasses to use for both eclipses? So I recommend keep them in their box before you hand them out in their program. Once you hand them out, you can tell your patrons, um, fold them gently, put them in like an envelope, a standard size envelope works great. And then like, or like in a book or somewhere flat, um, if you put them in an envelope, it stops them from getting scratched. And then if they want to check if a glasses work, just hold it up a little bit. If you see any light coming through, no good. If you see just the sun and nothing else, you're good to go. Um, but just storing them in like a small envelope. But if you haven't distributed them yet, keep them in the box. That's actually the safest place for them right now. Yeah, if you receive glasses in 2017, you can get them for now. Um, just because you got them in 2017 doesn't mean they're not available currently. Um, does anybody else have any program ideas that they are thinking about for this summer around the eclipses? Do welding helmets work? Yes, welding helmets actually do have enough filter on them that they do work. They're one of the few items that aren't specific uh, solar viewing mylar that can work. Uh, we have a local astronomy professor that might do a, a program about what an eclipse is, and then he's going to bring his telescope, and I don't think he's going to do something during the eclipse, but I, I don't know yet. I don't, I don't really know, but he's been a great resource for stargazing both during the day and at night, so it's just one idea. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, local universities, community colleges, um, a lot of professors and teachers there are great resources. Um, high school science teachers are also, high school and middle school science teachers are also a great resource if you want them to come do a small project around that. Could you do DIY glasses as a craft? Yes, and uh, I say yes and no. The only reason is you wanna make sure that they are safe um, because it is a very specific mylar that you need. Um, and there's only two companies that we recommend purchasing uh, glasses from, which is American Paper Optics or uh, Rainbow Symphony. Um, I recommend instead of doing a craft, creating your own glasses, you could create something that goes over your phone. So you could take a picture because your phone will have the same issues our eyes do of the, the sun is too bright. Um, but what you could do is you could also make a craft of storing your eclipse glasses. So creating little glasses holders um, would to me be a better craft. Um, I just want to make sure with safety wise that you have the correct filter in order to view it. Let's see, another comment is perhaps intergenerational programming. I recently spoke to a woman in assisted living nearby that is very excited and wanted to be sure I knew about the upcoming events. 
Yes, absolutely. I do know that we focus a lot on kids and younger patrons and getting them interested, but your older patrons also want to see the, these things. Um, make sure your senior centers, your assisted living facilities, long care facilities um, are ready and willing to get the patrons that are able to go outside to go view this as too. The beautiful thing about Eclipse is it impacts everybody. Um, so that is a great idea about including um, a different group that would also really love to be involved. Anybody here want to do an Eclipse program but have no idea where to start? Yes. Okay. I kind of figured, yes, I'm seeing a few hands go up. Wonderful. All right. I love my segues. So here I have a resource for you guys that you can start at least planning um, maybe a hands-on activity in order to get going. So one of the things we've developed here at StarNet is what we call our STEM activity clearinghouse. Uh, when we first started doing this work, um, we realized that a lot of library staff were getting their activities and things from Pinterest. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but not all of the activities on Pinterest were scientifically accurate or were developed well for a library setting. So what we've developed is what we call our activity clearinghouse. So we have gone through and added about, um, we have 38 collections featuring over 500 interactive STEM activities from pre-create, pre, that pre-K through adult library programs. Um, on our homepage, we usually showcase about eight different ones, eight different collections, but we have gone through and we have checked that the science is good behind it, the engineering is good, that these can be facilitated in a library setting, or we've provided um, modifications into a library setting. Um, we pulled a lot of these activities from areas like uh, NASA's Space Place, Children's Museum of Houston. Um, so we've wanted to make sure that this is an easy, free um, site for you guys in order to find some activities to support your programs. So like, for example, here's eight of our collections. Um, a lot of these tie into different projects we're doing. So we've got the We Are Water project, which is about water in the Four Corners region, um, our STEAM equity, which is a lot of Spanish language activities. Um, we did our lookup, so around the James Webb Space Telescope, Moon, Mars, and Beyond, our moon focus, so you could find some eclipse activities in there, but it's all about the Artemis mission to the moon. Um, and then you can see right there, our solar eclipse activity for libraries. So this project I'm working on right now that I'm presenting to you is called SEAL. So, and you can see Sunny the Seal giving his thumbs up of approval. Yes, I don't know, I know seals don't have thumbs. My brother pointed that out to me, but we still wanna give our thumbs up of approval. Um, for all of the activities we have, this is a great, this collection would be a great starting place for you. Um, if you have no idea what eclipse program you want to do, we've got activities there all about the eclipse. Um, thank you, Kara. She has shared that link in the chat for all of you that will take you to our homepage. Um, and just say you want to find your own activity um, instead of using one of the collections. So I recommend you go to browse and filter all activities um, and then and look for the sort bar on the left hand side. We like to call this the Amazon basically of uh, activity. So you are able to sort it for everything that you want. So to begin searching. So, for example, say I want an activity for tweens that is gonna take one hour. That's easy for me to do because I'm not very familiar with STEM programming. And I specifically want directions in Spanish because I'm gonna be in, interacting with a my Spanish language community and I have a library staff member who speaks Spanish. So as we can see here, it's pulled it all up and I've got about 14 items that match what I'm looking for as I, look through these, I come across this one. This looks like fun, it's all about bubbles. After you select an activity, if you notice, you can scroll down to related programming and resources. And this is why I recommend our clearinghouse for you, is we don't only just provide the activity for you to do, we also provide related links if you want to go learn more. The direct place we found it, if you are like, I really like this activity, do they have more in this on this site? So you can check that. 
We also like to uh, link to specific books. So that way you can connect this as a story time activity, provide some books for your patrons if they're continued interest in the topic that you are looking at. Um, so we do have all of that. And if you have a book suggestion, or if you're like, hey, I think I have this resource, you are welcome to email us and say, hey, I found this thing, please add it to your clearinghouse. We are more than welcome to do so. And then as always, one of the things we ask for y'all to do is after you've done an activity, we invite you to write a review about what you think about the activity. Um, we do read those. We've actually on um, a bunch of activities, we've had library staff say, hey, this was a great activity, but I had to modify it like this in order to get it to work in my library setting. And most of the time we take those modifications and then add them to the facilitation guide. So if you think or tried an activity and found a different way to do it, let us know. It will end up on the clearinghouse to advise other library staff. But this also lets us know if you enjoy this activity, if you like it, if you are really not understanding this activity and having some difficulty with it, um, let us also know. We can go in and modify it. We can take it off the clearinghouse if we're like, hey, this was a good idea in theory, but no longer works. Um, so your reviews let us know how we're doing. And so for those of you who haven't yet come up with an Eclipse program yet, um, I say go check out the clearinghouse, look at some of the resources we have. And then this is the, the big thing for you. This is a list of resources that you can use to also build your activity. So for those of you who were asking, hey, how do I sign up for Eclipse classes? That link at that top, the SurveyMonkey link, um, that will allow you to sign up for Eclipse classes. The application must be completed in one sitting and you must upload on library letterhead a brief letter from your director or other similar responsible party attesting that you intend to utilize these glasses for educational, free educational programs. You will not sell the glasses you receive and that you will complete um, a survey at the end and commitment to participate in any relevant trainings around this. And you do have the option to receive 2,000, 1,000, or 500 pairs of Eclipse glasses. Um, yeah, so Kara says the link for these slides is in the main Google Docs, so you will have access to this link. The reason why we are requesting a director or similar, and it could be that if you just, you know, they handwrite something and you take a picture and upload it, that is fine. The only reason we are asking for a letter from your director is in 2017, the first time we did this, we would have three or four people from the same library requesting glasses. And when you're trying to go through a list of 7,000 libraries, a lot of duplicates happen. So we want to make sure that you guys all get access to the glasses, but that we're not sending, you know, 10,000 glasses to a small rural library in Vermont when we could be sending those to say like New York or Hartford or things like we want to make sure you have glasses for your community, but we also want to make sure everybody can get access to it as well. Um, the link to the clearinghouse, which Kara dropped, thank you, um, is also here. Our online community, the one I talked about where you guys can chat with other library staff across the country, uh, that is the community link right there. And then Rick, I think this is what you're talking about is Andy Fracknoy came up with a, uh, eclipses in fiction. So this is books, music, art, videos. So if you guys want to do a mystery science theater or something, this link is great. It lists everything where an eclipse showed up. So if you wanted to do a program around showcasing a movie that has an eclipse, do a book club with um, a book on eclipses or anything like that, you can find some great information there. And then these are the links to NASA Solar System Ambassadors and the Night Sky Network if you wanted to reach out to somebody in your community. And then finally, our STEM and Live videos. So we have done a lot of um, virtual training, how-to videos, things like that. That link will take you to our uh, YouTube page. So if you're like, hey, I have no idea how to facilitate STEM in libraries, we've got some strategy videos on that. If you're like, hey, how do I do this activity? we might have a how-to video on that. So this is an awesome resource for you guys. And again, these links are there in that Google Doc, so you guys will be able to click on everything. Um, let's see here. Can these be distributed to the community? Do they have to be connected with the day, a day of Eclipse program? Um, I recommend you hand them out not on Eclipse Day because it's going to be insane. Um, I recommend hosting them 
before, and they don't have to be a specific eclipse program. Um, just as long as you do a little safety of how to use the glasses, um, which we do provide information on that in that booklet that we provide with your eclipse glasses. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to do like a story time that does, has nothing to do with eclipses, but you wanted to give eclipse glasses to the parents, you're welcome to do that. Um, but we just recommend you do it during a program. Rick, is your hand up for a question? Yes, it is. Thank you, Stephanie. I just wanted to put in a plug here. NASA is still looking for solar eclipse ambassadors. Um, so especially for New Hampshire, I'm the amateur astronomer, but we haven't found an undergrad, preferably not a senior, because we want someone who's going to be around next year. But we're looking for uh, a co college student or university student in New Hampshire to pair with me to make presentations to libraries, to communities and stuff like that. And I don't know what the status is in the other New England states. I think Vermont has an undergrad, but they're still taking applications. So if anyone uh, knows of any undergrads or amateur astronomers or even adults with a uh, interest in science, please ask them to go and apply, especially here in New England, because uh, the sun waits for no one. Yeah, one of the projects that NASA is doing is what are called NASA Solar Eclipse Ambassadors. So there's solar system ambassadors, and then they're doing a specialty group specifically for the eclipses. Um, and they are looking for community college and undergraduate students to help also be those subject matter experts. Um, so if you guys are connected with your local universities, local community colleges, let them know about this project. Um, through our community, we will be helping libraries connect to Solar Eclipse Ambassadors as well. Um, so there will be connections all around for you guys to support you in this. So I know we're coming close to the end of the hour, so I know I threw a bunch of information at you, but for those of you who we're like, how do I even get started? Now that you've seen a bunch of the different resources available, what are you most excited about the upcoming eclipse eclipses? And do you guys feel a little more confident about, oh, I know how to start planning for a program now? Any, very glad to have all these resources. We'll be putting them to good use. Uh, do you know how the state libraries are going to share the kits with public libraries? It seems like you want the kits for the eclipse itself. So actually, no, we are telling all state libraries not to uh, circulate the kits uh, during the eclipse, only because those specialty items, you guys are going to be experiencing a huge influx of people into your communities, especially those who are in totality. Um, for example, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, who experienced the 2017 eclipse, their community of like 12,000 people, they grew to about 50,000 during the 2017 eclipse. Like you are going to experience a large influx of people. We are recommending that those kits do not circulate because trying to manage with just a few items, a huge group of people is going to be insane. So we actually don't recommend doing it at that time. Um, but each state is doing their circulation a little different. I recommend you reach out to your specific state library to ask them how they're doing it. Um, like I said, each each one has been different. I know some are circulating it. And if you come to our in-person workshop, you get priority. Some aren't even circulating at all. They're just giving it to their larger, like Arizona didn't circulate. They gave it to their, let's see, Phoenix got it. I think Tucson got it. They gave it to their larger cities and let them do a regional circulation and let them manage it. So just check with your own state library on what they're planning to do. Um, Let's see, so I'm excited to collaborate with your schools. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see here. I'm excited. Thank you for the resources. You're absolutely welcome. Is there a way to recreate the kits? Yes, email us. Um, I actually have my email on the next slide. You're welcome to email me and I can provide a kit list for you. Um, so if you would like to recreate your own kit, I know things like the sonoculars are decently cheap, like the small ones are like 20 bucks. The bigger ones are running about $100 each. 
um, but they are really fun. The solar telescope, I will say, it is expensive. It's like around $1,000. Um, so the solar telescope may be a little bit out of some libraries' budgets, um, but you can definitely connect with a night sky network group. They may have their own solar telescope. The Sunspotter is like about 250 or so. So we can definitely give you guys a kit list so you can recreate your own kits. Um, next up is to go to the clearinghouse, start making plans. Yay, I'm so glad. Um, your community was super excited in 2017. Can't wait to connect in 2024. Yes. I mean, the biggest thing we are encouraging public libraries, have fun with these. Yes, it's a lot that's going to be coming. You're going to get a huge influx of people, um, but it's really an exciting event. And it's an event that is pretty rare and doesn't happen a lot. Like a partial solar eclipse, you're probably going to experience a few times in your lifetime, but actual totality and the fact that it, totality is coming through New England and, you know, from bottom to top only takes six hours to drive. So you guys are all within driving distance of totality. Um, so this is going to be a very, very fun event that I encourage all of you guys to engage with. Um, connect with your local astronomy clubs. Absolutely. They are a fantastic resource, not just for the eclipse, but for steam programming and space programming in general. Um, they bring some really fun things. Some have like blow up planetariums that you can like go into. Some of them will do night sky viewing, day viewing. Um, they are fantastic resources for you. And yeah, start planning now. Um, come April 8th, the hotels are gonna open because most hotels don't book out except for a year in advance. There's gonna be a huge influx. And um, something we've been promoting in our in-person workshops is connect with your local municipalities Libraries are one of the few trusted government entities in each of your communities. So you guys are also a great distribution network for your mun municipality for eclipse related logistics. Um, like I said, a lot of your communities are gonna grow by a lot. There's gonna be a lot of people coming to see. So connect with your municipality. So that way you can make sure everybody's on the same page. You can be distributing information, providing information, things like that. Um, so since I only have a few minutes left, one of the big things we say, please do look up my safety glasses, um, safe viewing equipment, of course, and again, indirect viewing, but do look up, do have fun with these. It's going to be a great experience. And the fact that the next one is not until 2045, um, this is our last fun chance to view this. And that is all I have. So I'm going to stop sharing so I can see everybody's faces. What other questions do you guys have around eclipses, STEM programming, or how to get started? And I don't have that link, so I'm going to put it into the chat of um, our SEAL webpage. This is the gr uh, great place to get started for um, engaging with us at the SEAL project. Any other questions? Are you guys excited? I hope I made you excited and not daunted. <laughs> I just wanna add one more thing. The great thing about an eclipse is no one has a patent on the sun, moon, or earth. So kids, adults, teenagers, everyone's free to put an eclipse logo on a hat or I got my coffee mug here with the eclipse mobile. Whatever you want to do, it could be a great fundraiser for nonprofits. Um, and the libraries, as Stephanie said, could be a great uh, clearinghouse and, you know, either hold events or just network and tie all your communities together. So I may, um, sorry, somebody asked me to put up this slide again. So I'm throwing it back up. And then um, American Paper Optics and Rainbow Symphony is the second group. And again, with our STEAM Clearinghouse, yes, we have Eclipse stuff, but we also have standard. If you want to do a project on the sun, if you want to do something on the solar system, if you want to do something on earth science, we have 
all types of different things. If you wanted to do an engineering design challenge, we have a bunch of different topics that are all STEM related. So it's not just eclipses, but I definitely encourage you guys using it as a jumping off point. So again, that's my direct email. You're welcome to email me with any questions you guys have. Um, and I am happy to send you resources your way or to help you out. Again, for those of you in Massachusetts, I will be out there on April 13th um, in Framingham to do a in-person workshop. Uh, Joyce, yes. Yeah. Yes. I heard my name. Who said my name? That was me, Stephanie. I was just asking, are you going to be coming to New Hampshire May 25th? Um, I don't think that's me. I'm not the only New England one I'm doing right now is Massachusetts, but I do know other people on my team are coming out there for different things. Let me check the who's coming when. I think Brooks, because he's doing Maine for us as well. Yeah, I think I think that's Brooks and Annie yeah. doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, hold on. We have a whole calendar because, like I said, we've been going to all 50 US states. We're trying to go to Puerto Rico right now um, just to make sure that everybody gets impacted. I think Deborah said it was Brooke. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I, I just wanted to give him a ride in the Eclipse Mobile and meet him. So I'll be, I'll be attending that in May. Yeah, so we will be in Connecticut um, June 6th. That will be with Brooks Mitchell and Annie Holland, who are other members of my team. They will also be doing Rhode Island on 425. Uh, Vermont is on May 23rd. New Hampshire is the 25th. That's, again, both Brooks and Annie. And then Brooks and Annie will be doing Maine um, the May 18th and May 19th. And then we'll also, for those of you I know on borders, we're also doing some in New York and New Jersey as well. So we are trying to impact all y'all. So we, you will be seeing more of us. So we only have two more minutes left. Does anybody have any more questions, concerns? Uh, anything I can help you on as you guys prepare for this super fun activity? Yes, Annie and Brooks are part of our organization. So Brooks is an education associate like me. Um, and then Annie is actually the um, PI. So she's the one managing the entire SEAL project. Uh, we are coming to Rhode Island on April 25th is when we are coming to Rhode Island. So again, you guys already kind of had a little bit, if you attend any of our in-person workshops, you're getting a little bit of a taste through me. Some of this, you'll be like, oh, I know this when Brooks or Annie cover it, but they will go a lot more details. They will actually have activity, like going over the activities. Um, we have a solar science presentation to explain what exactly happens during an eclipse. Um, and we also have things like, you know, how do you indirectly view the sun? How do you take care of your eclipse glasses and all of that stuff? So I encourage you, if you haven't yet, um, sign up for the in-person workshop. And also we are doing virtual trainings um, every single month that are covering a lot of these topics as well. So if you are unable to make it to an in-person program, um, check out our SEAL webpage and we have links out to those virtual trainings. Do you have a pattern for eclipse glasses? I don't think so. Um, I will check with my team. I'm not sure about it. Cause like I said, we're, we are more encouraging you buy from the resource or, or uh, get them from us. Where are the in-person workshops listed? Uh, contact your state library. They will have the links to that cause they're managing the registration process on the in-person workshops. So, and it is the top of the hour. And so I was really excited to, to zoom in and see all of you guys. Again, I'm a New Englander at heart. I may be living in Colorado, but uh, I always find every excuse to come back. Um, I hope you guys have a great time and that you have some really great ideas for your Eclipse programs and always reach out to us here at StarNet. We are more than willing to support uh, public library staff. Thank you so much, Stephanie.